Okay. Great. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Uh, so this lecture will be recorded anyway, in case I hope you will be with us till the end. And my name is Olga. I'm a product manager of Digital Plus. And today we're going to leave the workshop where we will show you the node-based AI editor, where you can create really magnificent graphic content in 2D and 3D. You can create videos and etc. cetera uh, using our AI workspace. Uh, our product is a partner in this competition, and this is uh, the tool where creators will be uh, creating their comics for five eager competition. And we will start with a short description of what is Digital Plus, and then I will show you the interface shortly and just some pipelines and some interesting a uh, services that are there. And if you have questions, we're here today to chat and to discuss, and I will ask for them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also uh, write them in chat. I will uh, check it from time to time. Uh, so uh, if I'm correct, maybe Anna will correct me, the AI lab will start itself uh, tomorrow. And we will select 20 participants, 20 uh, pro or just beginners AI artists that will work with us on this comic competition using Digital Plus. They will get premium access and will um, get access not only to AI tools that will allow you to generate, transform, enhance your images, videos, and 3D models, but also to um, the ability to train your own models using Dreamboost node um, and to add basically any object to the memory of stable diffusion to generate uh, something that the neural network didn't know uh, in your own style or a specific object that you want to generate. For example, your cat or your specific character, this will be a very interesting pipeline for our work. Uh, okay, so let's start uh, just a short description on what is Fidgetal Plus. This is basically the uh, workspace. Uh, our company started as um, XR Studio, and for seven years, our company Fidgetalism was um, working on different projects uh, that was using machine learning to generate unique experience in virtual reality, in augmented reality. And at one point, we realized that we need a tool to combine different neural networks in one space because each neural network neural network has its own settings. You need to learn how to code, how to launch Google Colab, or you need to understand the, the specific uh, algorithm that you work with. So we decided to create the one and only unique workspace where all different types of neural networks can be combined just in a simple pipeline, in any pipeline you want, just using one click. So let's uh, go to Digital Plus and small disclaimer, we are a startup. And what you will see here is alpha version of our product. And you can face some minor difficulties. Sometimes uh, you can face some little errors or maybe inconveniences. That's okay. We are very open to any community feedback and we are building the product with the community. So if you will be proactive, if you will tell us about the like problems that you face, the desires that you have, the additional tools you want to add, please feel free to contact me, to contact our team in Discord or now a Telegram channel. And the more proactive you will be, uh, the faster the product will look uh, better and you will enjoy it. Okay, so uh, we log in into uh, the workspace. Currently, we support only Google Chrome and uh, this is that tool, right? So uh, there is some small onboarding here to just for your understanding how it works. It's more complicated than just one button, but it uh, 
but you know you will benefit from this eventually because you will be able to build the factory of neural networks and it will never be able to to, to do this in more simpler tools like DALI, for example. So I will uh, lead you through this onboarding shortly. So here you have infinite workspace like a whiteboard where you can add your neural networks and create a content. On the left, you have a sidebar. And in this sidebar, you can see different neural networks that we have in additional um, nodes that help you to work with these neural networks. Uh, you have in each uh, neural network, you have tags and pay attention to these tags because these tags will help you to navigate and to understand what is going on here. Because on the left, this is the input of the neural network and on the right, it is the output. So basically, if we want to see how, well, for example, stable diffusion work, we'll see that stable diffusion works uh, and it generates images out of text, while, for example, this node icon, 3D human for photo, generates 3D models out of images, right? So it just gives you some brief understanding on what's going on here. You can add nodes by just simply clicking on it on the workspace and you will see it here. Each neural network has its own instruction. It's very brief instruction just to give you some understanding on what's going on. But each neural network has more additional settings on our AI library. Again, small disclaimer, we have created the biggest AI library. This is a different product. It's free for everyone, but the biggest AI aggregator. Uh, and there is a very detailed instruction on each AI tool in our library. You can see how different settings uh, influence the results. You can see like what you can create with this and etc. and etc. and etc. So feel free to explore it if you have the desire, right? But this short version of instruction should be enough to just, you know, understand on what to do. So what we have here on the left, I will just give you a short explanation. So uh, train, this is a premium um, AI tool that will be available only for uh, AI lab participants. Other participants that will not be selected for this AI lab are, are free to join our wait list and we add users very often right now and you will be able to get the free uh, access to all the tools except this one and another one and we'll tell you about this later or to pay a premium access and get this the full access basically. So this is a very interesting node. It's DreamBook. It allows you to uh, teach neural network on your specific style, images, and etc. We have uh, textural images uh, models here, free, uh, free items, stable diffusion version 2.1, stable diffusion version 1.5, and Kandinsky. Kandinsky is also a text to image model that works with, uh, as I remember, 15 or 30 different languages. So you can use Russian, Spanish, English, whatever you want. Uh, to generate your images with this model. Uh, it works less beautiful than Siebel Diffusion, obviously, but it has, you know, your own specific style. So feel free to explore. Neural networks are always about exploration. Uh, so we have three versions of stable diffusion and well, uh, two versions of stable diffusion and the difference between them, we will go to this a little bit later while we will generate uh, the images. We have also StyleGAN. This is basically one of these charts of neural networks and StyleGAN on faces data sets. This is a good point if you need to generate a specific face of the person, not out of text, but out of a huge data set that was created and that you can move by different uh, parameters um, along, uh, you know, your data set and you can change the age of the face that you generate or the gender of the face you generate and etc. and etc. Uh, what also is here is disk diffusion. This is another text to image model that was very popular before stable diffusion came in. It um, works worse on portraits, but it has very interesting diffusion that you can also see, for example, in some mid-journey works, uh, when the results, you know, have specific patterns and it's very good for video generation. It's very good for landscapes, for stylization. So this diffusion 
is also a nice thing to explore and work with. We have style gun on very different data sets. Um, again, this is a neural network, fusion neural network. This generates objects out of different data sets. We have a very long list of what can be generated. You cannot include it by text, but you can generate uh, beautiful videos out of it. And we'll do this later. Uh, we have a uh, human pretty human of photo, basically the ability to generate a 3D model out of full-size human image. Uh, this 3D model then can be downloaded and put into Blender or other 3D programs and we work with. Um, you can put also texture on it and I will show you this later. We have the style transfer when you need to uh, transfer the style of the image from one specific style to another having a specific image in mind, you can use this neural network. You can also use stable diffusion for this, but just, you know, they have different results. We have remote background where we obviously neural networks works pretty well with different types of objects here. And you can, um, you know, influence specific settings, for example, the uh, blends of the ages and how the background will be deleted. We have some very interesting neural networks that allows you to generate videos and GIFs out of uh, one image. This is portrait animation. We will work with this more closely later uh, when we will be able to generate um, videos out of your character that you created using, for example, stable diffusion or to generate synthetic data to learn uh, to teach a neural network on our specific character later. We have Morph. This is a full neural network. It generates um, beautiful uh, videos. It combines different images in a very beautiful style. We'll show you later. Uh, another neural network that generates synthetic data. So um, two neural networks that allows you to enhance the quality upscale images and face restore, amazing neural network that allows you to restore faces on any generation that you created using stable diffusion and delete any artifacts that you, for example, got accidentally. Uh, what we also have, we have a very cool thing, which is depth map. Uh, it is used with stable diffusion version 2.1. Image to prompt when you have I don't know, the lack of ideas in you have a style image you want, you know, to be the basic of your generation. You can put any image into this neural network and then God attacks the prompt uh, to use it later in other generations. Uh, what we also have here, we have the automatic mask creation because we have in painting here where you can not just gener generate something, but you can select a specific part of the image and then to generate and uh, to, to change only this part. So using this neural network, you can uh, automatically create the mask on specific objects that are listed here. Works the best for people. And we have some additional, we are almost done with this overview explanation. We have some additional tools here that will just allow you to import the files that you want to work later with or uh, extract a specific uh, frames for your video to put down later on, for example, to stable diffusion and etc. And uh, this very interesting note, it allows you to put the texture you generated or any other texture on your 3D model and to preview how it will work. We will see this after the intro. Okay, so what we have here. Uh, a little bit on the right, we have templates. What is template? Templates is the specific amount of AI tools that are um, set together on the workspace and allows you to see a, finished pipe, a specific finished pipeline. Well, it will take a little bit of time to uh, load it, but you will see how it works. So this is a re uh, ready to use pipeline where you can change only just some small details and regenerate the whole chain and see the result. Let's just wait a little bit um, while I see it. Can we have the Discord link, please? Okay, um, yeah, sure. Um, Anna, can I ask you to send the Discord link to the chats? Where will we will send the little bit later. Okay, great. So the template is loaded and here you can see how... Sorry, let me just zoom in. 
Yeah, so you can zoom in and zoom out just using your touchpad uh, on a workspace, and you can see how we generated a specific image using Stable Diffusion 2.1. If we have something that we do not like, we can use negative prompt here. And then we used um, this neural network that generates depth map from the image. And we will see later on why we need this because depth map allows you to generate very pretty in painting when you want to um, change image a little bit, but, but still have the same pose, for example. We use depth map and the initial image as the input for, again, stable diffusion with the same text prompt, but we change it to mm, some pink heritage and generate pink hair, but it added some pinky uh, colors to the image. Then we generate using stable diffusion 1.5, uh, the, the landscape for this girl to have it as a background and use a remove background. We put our girl on this specific background. Then we did a very nice face restore. I will just show you how cool it works. Just see, this is amazing. And uh, then we used portrait animation and basically our girl became alive, right? So uh, one of the examples of the template that you can use. Let's go to other ones and this one will be very useful for our work later on. Just a second. This is the template that allows you to choose the specific pose for your character. One of the very often things that we um, struggle with while we use the text to image models is that we can generate something beautiful, but it's not 100% manageable, right? It's not that we can change any detail that we want to change or the generation. And one of the things that we think will be very important for this specific workshop is to change in the pose of the characters that you will generate. And here you will see how depth math and its combination with stable diffusion 2.1 works perfectly. What we can do and uh, our ALA participants will have that is that you will have a pose bank, basically just the amount of images from the internet with characters in different poses. And using depth math, you can generate the depth math out of it and then you put it for some reason, the lens were to lit it, but that's okay. And then you can add it into stable diffusion. Uh, basically, it's supposed to work like that. For some reason, they were delayed, and that's fine. And then you will see, uh, using the prompt, you will see that the character you want to generate will be generated in the style that you described in the prompt. Uh, but the pose will be the same as the initial image. Same example with different pose of the character. Then you can upscale the image, then you can make face restore, so you can enhance the image uh, further after it. Uh, so let's uh, see how all this, we can, um, you know what, just let me give you some small explanation on how to work with the workspace. So uh, right now, <laughs> we have the ability to save only one project. As I mentioned before, we are in alpha version. I'm sorry for that, uh, but you have buttons like clear workspace and save your project. So if you loaded some specific template, you can change details, regenerate it. But let's clear the workspace. Uh, just a sec. Clear the workspace. Okay, done. And after we uh, generate something, we can go to our project and load the same project. I loaded that project before. I hope it will be shown. Okay, yeah, some problems inside. No link, it's okay. Um, so. So here are, are some examples of what they need further, but what we can do, we can start creating from the start. Uh, so as I said before, we have stable diffusion and stable diffusion 2.1. This is stable diffusion 1.5. Uh, by clicking on the node, you can add it to the workspace. 
And let's just dive in shortly into the node to see how it works. Here we have the approximate maximum time on what it should take to generate the image. Obviously, it usually uh, very much less. Uh, here you have to type something. Uh, this is called the prompt. I don't know the level of the people here, so I'm sorry if I'm explaining very simple things or if I'm not explaining simply enough, just tell me and write the things that you do not others. But text prompts is just basically any text you need to uh, tell the neural network. Um, this is the description of the image you want to get. If you do not, basically we can type anything. I usually type pet cat just to see if it works, you know, um, and it will generate you the amount of images that are listed here. It could be any amount from one to four. It's called batch generation, right? Uh, you can also use a negative prompt here uh, to type some details that you do, do not want to see. For example, here I had some very long prompt of a cyberpunk girl in a specific style and etc. And for example, I don't really like, I don't know why, I don't want to see this pink color on the images, pink color, and I don't want to see it full body size. Okay, so I just type here what I don't like. Here we have some steps. Uh, you will have a specific lecture that will tell you in detail on what each of these parameters mean. Uh, you also have some small hints here, just clicking on it. I will not be talking about this for a long time because our lecture is more like an overview of the product, but see, it basically allows you to change the generation totally. This is like a random number, uh, that will give you a totally different result in this specific prompt. Okay. So we have here some fat cats, for example. Uh, and we can leave the same um, seed and just click on regenerate. Also here in basic settings, we have the width and the height of the image, and we also have artistic mode. I will show you how it works right now. Let's see how the negative prompt works. And with the um, fat cat, okay, fat cat looks like a fat cat. And if we use artistic mode, for example, it works characters and landscapes. Artistic mode is basically the beautiful button. This is something that we created ourselves. And um, it also it actually adds some specific words to the products. They are always random, but they will make your image beautiful in a specific style. Just just beautiful. If you have a specific style in mind, you can put it into prompt. But if you want just something beautiful, just add it here. Uh, we it would works well for characters. So let's not generate fat cat, but let's generate, for example, female dwarf. Um, dwarf. And then, yeah, and see how it works. Uh, the difference between stable diffusion 1 and um, 1.5 and stable diffusion 2.1 is that they have different settings. For example, stable diffusion 1.5, it has in paint the mask and it has uh, um, a start image. Uh, basically the image that you want to start with your generation from. Uh, while stable diffusion 2.1 has this ability to generate depth math in a different node uh, and use it later for things. Okay, so do you remember the previous generation? It has a lot of pink here and it doesn't have pink anymore. And uh, the view of uh, the woman became bigger. We still have full body size somewhere, but in general, it became bigger, so it's good. You can save your image uh, just by clicking on save, and the image will be saved with the whole prompt and the seat of this image. Okay, so we have some female dwarves, and they are made in artistic mode, and they look artistic in some way. Do not forget about cherry picking and uh, basically uh, just using random seeds here just to see different results. Uh, let's type the same prompt into stable diffusion. Uh, one, 2.1. It doesn't have artistic mode here yet. It will have later on. And if we're talking about the size of the image, um, the maximum size that we allow here right now is 1K, but I recommend to use the smaller size because uh, 
it's better generally to generate a lot of images in the small preview first and then to enhance it using upscale or using the sales table in the future. It just works faster, you know, for your pipeline. Okay. So while we are generating some portraits here, I want to show you something else. We also have this button here, by the way, that allows you just, you know, to zoom out and see what we have on the screen, not to get lost. One of the interesting uh, pipelines I want to show you today, which will be very useful for this specific lab, is how to not generate a simple character or a specific location for this character. Okay, so we see the difference between artistic mode and non-artistic mode in different staple diffusion, right? Uh, and if you are actually lack of uh, how to write the prompt, you don't know how to write the prompt, you have some doubts which character to use and etc. I would recommend you two websites. Maybe you are familiar with this. One of the most popular websites is Lexica. I'm not a product engineer, I'm a product manager, so I don't know how to write the prompts, but I know how to Google. So I basically can just Google for stable diffusion uh, and you can type what you want. For example, fat cast. It will first what what is more important for me with Lexica is not just to give you prompt ideas. It actually shows you what stable diffusion is capable and is not capable of. And if we type that cat, you see ugly cats, you see beautiful cats, but in general, you see that neural network is pretty good with cats, right? It understands the concept of the cat and etc. But if we type, for example, something like, I don't know, I've never tried it. But let's see, this is one of the most popular Russian card series. Yeah. Uh, so if, in case you don't know, uh, looks like that. It's very popular in Japan. This is the creature with some big uh, circle. Uh, I forgot the name. <laughs> ears, uh, ears. And we see that in Lexica, that it doesn't really understand what it is. In, in some, like, it generates something as a monkey. Sometimes here, yeah, not really. So what I like about Lexica is that with very short um, requests, you can get an idea of what neural networks are good and not good at to generate, right? It doesn't mean that you cannot generate Chaburashka at all. You can use Chaburashka, for example, here and download it. And um, yeah, and then you can use it. I'm improvising right now. I don't know what it will be out of it. Uh, you can import files here. You also can do like this just to drop it. And you can use, for example, stable diffusion. Uh, I better use this one. Um, we can generate as a start image, and we can generate depth math from it first. So uh, the creature that will be generated will have this specific form. We also can use. For example, image to prompt to see how it will work, how neural network will actually describe the creature itself from the start, right? If we have doubts how to generate it. Let's see. And we can also use uh, stable diffusion version 1.5 to use this one as a start image here. And I would use the prompt that the neural network will generate itself. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, this Chiburashka as a start image. And then the description of the Chiburashka that neural networks understand itself um, and the depth math for it. And we'll see how it will work, what, what we will have here. And maybe to add some specific um, stylization, I don't know, neon lights. Let's see how it will work. Let's wait until the prompt will be done. Uh, while we wait, we can go back to Lexica and see how it works. You can add, um, go to any image and copy the prompt and see that it also shows you the version of the specific model and it also shows you the scene. So basically you could just copy the settings and some 
uh, disclaimer that we will add the integration to Lexica soon to our product. So you will be able to do all these things without uh, leaving our product, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, the other source that I recommend is Prompt Money. It just gives you some understanding on different types of the artists. You can choose Trend the Prompt Builder and you choose the basically uh, one of the three main uh, diffusion models, which is stable diffusion here. We choose what we want it to generate, the person, the object, or the landscape. And then you can add some details, you can add camera mode, you can, I don't know, geometry, and you will see the preview on all this one uh, landscape uh, in de very, very different styles. So it's pretty cool thing uh, to play with. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so here we got the prompt. A small stuffed animal with big ears on the floor and picture by Alec. Okay, so sounds sounds valid. Let's add it. Um, my first polar hashtag. I love it. And we just will add it and see how it works. I will use smaller size of the image so it will be faster. Let's see. I've no idea what it's gonna uh, what it's gonna do, uh, but it will be interesting. Uh, so what the other thing I wanted to show you while we wait for results is after you generated the portrait and the portrait that you like, for example, because in this specific competition, you will be generating um, comics, right? So you will be generating locations, you will be generating objects, you will be generating portraits of the specific people. One of the cool things that you can do is, uh, what, what is the problem? Let me explain. It. So, um, this node, Dream Booth, it allows you to generate yourself, for example, in any style. You just add five to six images of your surface and launch this node. It calculates around 30 minutes and then it basically generates you your own model that knows you, exactly you. And after that, you just use uh, Stable Diffusion and your own model in stable diffusion. It works like this. Let me show you. To generate yourself in very different steps. But how to generate a character? If I generated this girl, for example, somehow, and then I want to use this specific girl further on in my different other generation, how, how would I do that? Well, basically, we um, explored a pipeline that allows you to do that. You use portrait animation for this girl. Uh, I just did it recently. And it animates your face. And while it's animating your generated face, it basically uh, generates a synthetic data for your character. So uh, with using this node, extract from frame and put in different numbers of frames here, you will get uh, the images of this one girl from different sites. They may be, not be very different, but this is enough for neural network, right? And you need uh, like five or six of this. And after that, you will add them to stable diffusion, uh, to Dream Boost node. You can connect all of them. We have a specific tutorial for this. I will not be doing this right now because it will take each training takes around 30 minutes. We do not have time right this, but I will show you the results on different character. Well, what you can do is that you can uh, first create the image, create the portrait, then animate this portrait, then extract frames from this portrait to get uh, one girl from different angles. You can, I don't know, 100, for example. Okay, this one, I like this one. Uh, you can put them all into the Dream Booth and using our instructions, you can launch it and just describe it somehow to description we will say like a drawing or a woman. And I will try details. And here we name it. Um, let's call it, I don't know. Olga Wings. It's a war. It's a And we launch it. And after the end of the training, 
this model will appear in your stable diffusion in Trimboost section here. This is my model. I taught, I'm very selfish. I'll, I taught the model on myself as everyone did in our team. <laughs> uh, and also we have some models here. This is basically models that are available for everyone. I will explain you right now how it works. So we will be here. Uh, and you will be able to generate your own specific character in different styles and such. Okay, see what we got in Chaburashka. So what is interesting here is that it takes specifically this um, form and it fills up this specific form. The effect won't be like this without depth map. It's very, very cool one. And we put the description and stuff, small stuff animals with big ears, not specifically Chabarashka, but we're getting close with this from uh, something that stable diffusion have no idea, has no, had no idea about it. It's just something that looks at least similar. Uh, what I wanted to show you is uh, the example from uh, five Eber. Uh, character that we generated ourselves. Uh, this is the girl, the portrait of a girl that was created uh, using a uh, text to image model. And we generated synthetic data for this girl uh, using uh, this neural network that I showed you and this pipeline. And we created a model with this girl. In stable diffusion, it's called Del As. You will see you you will see this character as I understand in your own uh, script uh, if you will be selected for ALL. And after that, uh, I after I taught the model on this specific girl, uh, I go to stable diffusion. I choose this Del As as my model, and then I just type some very very long prompt that I took from. Um, Lexica. Some of the artworks are not very good, but some are pretty cool. For example, this one, she looks similar to me and she in some cyberpunk style. So what I can do here is I can use, for example, another stable diffusion. Uh, and this is called image to image, right? Uh, this is the fourth image. I use it as a start image. I copy the prompts. I even can copy the seed. So it won't go to different direction. Number of images is four, and the third image images um, is, for example, think, let's see how it works. What else I can do with this one? I can use face restore. If I have uh, want to have more similarity, I just increase this parameter and I also launch it. And after it will be done, I will probably use upscale and remove background. Um, remove background in our product works not only for removing the background, but it also uses as change of the background. For example, if I generated something. Okay. So it did face restore really fast for me. Let's see. Now I like the result. And here we have some minor differences, not that big. Maybe we need bigger image skip. Let's relaunch it. And what I can also do, sorry is I can remove background and put on the background something I generate in totally different thing. For example, we have, if we want to generate something abstract, right? Maybe not our case in this specific lab, but maybe the case just, you know, for your art. For example, complexity graphics, or let's see, uh, psychedelic. We have psychedelic. Let's generate some psychedelic background for our image, and we will connect this one to this one. Okay, so whilst calculating, what we also can do here with our Della is that we um, can go to, for example, Lexica and type some, you know, explore some different styles. For example, cartoon style. Just, you know, have some inspiration. Okay. 
Expert comic book. Okay. I just copy the prompt and um, I add stable diffusion here. You can stretch your node and zoom in at the text. I change my character to Della S because that was the name of the girl. And I choose her model. This is very important. And I generate her. Let's see what we'll get. Okay, now we have more variations because I change the settings of the start image and the uh, strength of the influence. And we have more variation we can choose from. Okay. And we generated some psychedelic background for our girl. This is a video, but it also, oh no, it's not a video, it's um, it's one frame. But you can also use this um, as service to generate a video. We just need to go to video settings and increase the duration for five, for example, in number of key frames for three. And then this image will transform into video. Okay. So while everything is calculate and I will look at the questions that you have. Okay. Um, a lot of questions. So how do we log in into Pigeon Plus? Is that we already have a login set up for us or do we have to sign up? Well, guys, um, as they understand the uh, 5e work will send the list of the participants each of you who will be selected for the interactive workshop and for the competition will get a link and the email i hope tomorrow anna will correct me please if i'm wrong and there will be all login details for you how to set up digital plus if you won't be selected we also will send you the link to join our wait list and most probably you will get uh, the basic access for free very soon is this Discord link for Digital Plus or 5e or Digital? Uh, then okay, I'm all in A Plus. Okay. So what I think who was popular. Okay. Um, okay. Maximum uh, number of images that you can use to train on your dream booth. Okay. So I have the case where one of our artists used 50 images of her own style. I really like that case. Um, maybe I will show you later. Uh, she is the illustrator and she generates and she uh, draws uh, specific girls with the head of the astronaut in like underwear. And she used 50 images of hers uh, to train trimbles on her images. And after she finished her model, she was shocked. She didn't know, you know, how to move on because uh, stable diffusion generated images that look exactly as she uh, drew them. And <laughs> even her colleagues were like kind of shocked because it was really hard, you know, to distinguish what was drawn by Pro and what was drawn by Neural Network. Okay, so we have some psychedelic video here. Uh, this is how uh, style gun works. Look how beautiful it is. And we can use change background here to, to put this beautiful girl on this specific background. And here we have Della in this specific style. I really like it. So this is not a random girl. This girl looks the same and then all that okay um uh, so uh what i can show you other different notes uh just again to give you some understanding on how it works uh style transfer style transfer is the note that allows you to change very quickly the style of your images into the style of the other images for example we have, let's take this image, just the third one. And let's take this one, this psychedelic one as the reference. What I like about digital is that you can, you know, combine them as you want and use well, one uh, item for different nodes. Uh, this is style transfer. 
Uh, I will show you more for a little bit later. Uh, we worked with this, we worked with this, we worked with image segmentation, looks, uh, works pretty easy. Uh, I hope it will work on this drawing, but it allows you to basically find a specific object. And if we choose the person, it will select just the person on the uh, screen and um, create the mask with this, for example, third one. Why it's cool? It's because uh, not maybe for this specific pipeline, but if you generate a location, a location with specific objects, and then you want to change only a specific object in this big picture of location, this node will be very helpful to uh, select this object automatically. Okay, so we see that there was this image in the style of this image. And yeah, you can change the strengths uh, of this image by just changing the parameter. Good cash segmentation. Maybe guys, you have other questions. Well, what else I can show you? It's not very relevant for this specific lab, but I understand that many people are working with 3D as an artist, is that you can um, uh, preview your textures on the 3D objects. You can just a second import file and upload uh, any 3D model that you have. Example, just a second. Which one? So this one. Oh, wait. What Right, just for a couple with my model. I would take another one. Okay, so we have a model of the frog. Then using this node, we can see how any texture will be shown on this model. Yes. So you can generate texture using different neural networks and just preview it on your image. What else can be interesting done with 3D? And we are fans of um, machine learning for 3D. And we see that this area is evolving really fast is that you can use the uh, image of the person full body size, for example, this one and you can turn it into a 3d model it will take a while some 10 minutes around 20 minutes uh, but you will get a real model and you can put the texture on it and then you can work with this in blender and other 3d programs later okay okay no it didn't work well with this one third one the second one for some reason, maybe because it's a drawing and, uh, well, let's see how it will work. This one, what I also wanted to show you, by the way, let's save this project, save our project to go to it later. It saved, everything okay? Well, I hope so. Uh, is how to use, um, in booths for generating icons. So what we did here, all right, let me reload. Okay, internet is back. So what we did here is we took the uh, data set of uh, icons for game development and uh, put it into the training of our own model. And then we were able to generate icons uh, in different styles and uh, different types of objects for these icons and etc. And I think it's pretty cool also for creating small items, for example, for uh, your story, some objects that will need to be held by characters and etc. Just a second, let's go there. 
And the other one I wanted to show you that is not very relevant for this specific workshop, but it's just a very cool thing to use is Morph. It's basically the neural network that allows you to combine totally different um, results into one beautiful video. Just a second. And there. And basically it will be a cool example on how to generate locations in different styles. So we also used um, depth mat here for a specific location. And then we will put it into stable diffusion to generate different variations. Okay, we can go here. So we started from one simple image and then we generate um, the depth mat from it. For some reason, it's now loaded into the template. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but we see that um, correcting the front, we can get very different results with the same, uh, you know, object in the room. So here we have some uh, psychedelic colors of the room, but the objects are still the same. They may be different a little bit, but they're still the same. And then we want to go to something very different, like the rule from Lead Runner, and it's so really different while the object are still remains as they were. This is pretty cool. Again, here, a uh, totally different style, minimalistic. The objects still are where they should be. And the fourth example. And here you can see how all these examples are combined into one video using ORF. So the video could be up to 10 seconds long, maybe slower, maybe faster. But this is a nice way to present your results. So I think that's it for today. What I want to show, oh, game dev icons. Let me upload this one. And I think it will be the last one for today. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. No, it, it, no, it doesn't use a user graphics card because oh, we have cloud computing. So it's not working on your local computer. It's working in the cloud. Okay, so here are some examples of um, objects that could be generated out of the model that was trained on the game icons. And we see how we use, uh, so we generate the icon first, this one we like, we remove background from it, and we use it at the start image for our model, and we try to play with the material it's made of, ceramic, wooden, metal, etc. And the form is more or less stable, and then that's all, and that's what I really like. Okay, guys, I think uh, it's, that's it for today. Questions? No questions? Okay. What if I ask one in chat is useful? Sorry? Uh, last one in chat on the question. Yeah, I just censored that. Yes. I use oh, visions of the word the spires and tenure system with more user friendly interface and does not use a user graphics card. Yes. It's a, it works in cloud computing. So uh if you want more details on the features, you can go to a library. I will send you the link to the chat right now. Uh we have very wide explanation of all the features and our price plan is also there and you can see the details of work. You go to Fidgetal Plus, I will send you the link to the chat, where is the chat? The chat. I don't really understand how to open the chat. I'm <laughs> this to you. Okay. And I will send you the link, I guess. Uh, and here you can see all the features that we have. And one thing that I didn't tell you about is the styles that we have for stable diffusion that are available for everyone. They called custom checkpoints. Here they are, just a sec. Let me go. 
So many you do not want to go into detailed front engineering, but you want to generate something in a very specific style and it should be only this style and not any other, you can use custom checkpoints. It uh, provides you, it's basically the custom models of table diffusion that was taught on specific styles of the images and they generate very consistent style. The internet is bad for me, I'm sorry. Um, but it's here you will see our research how we used um, three types of objects, currently a bunch of zombie and cute fat cats, uh, in this very different style. It also has mid-journey uh, style uh, that was taught uh, stable diffusion on mid-journey images. Uh, so to use this specific styles, you go to stable diffusion and just um, choose this specific model. Yeah, in the list of P plus model, and do not forget to use this word as a modifier for age specific style. It's load. It's not loading. Why? Okay. Okay. Here we see how styles are different for the Scarlett Johansson. Very beautiful duplex style. This one is very nice. In different styles, are from Amy, from some scary movies for Disney, etc. etc. We have a lot of them. And some tips for getting bad results, everything you can find in our area. Okay. Can you add upload your own custom checkpoint files? Not yet, but you can send us the link uh, to these custom check files and we can do it for you. Currently it's done manually. Uh, but we will add this uh, feature later on. Okay. Okay, guys, if you do not have any question right now, but maybe a question will come up in your head later, do not hesitate to contact us. We will answer all of them because we are here for you. Thank you all for being here and for staying with me uh, and Anna tonight and uh, happy creating. <laughs> I hope you will enjoy our product and enjoy uh, the ALAP itself. I hope we will meet again. We definitely will meet again. But, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Definitely, yes. If you want to test it, just leave your email in the wait list so we do not miss it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.